Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to our channel. This is Howler, and this is not my bike. Today I am going to test my dad's bike that he just recently swapped. Uh, so he got the new Dauphine and uh, swapped in the old one. And uh, got this one. This is a, as you can see in the title, Honda Deauville 2010 model, 700cc twin, V-twin, fuel injected, loads of torque, well loads, for a 700cc V-twin it has quite some torque, uh, it's pretty low powered though, I'm back in first gear. Uh, front visor is adjustable and it's wiggling like hell. And it rides pretty smoothly, apart from the, the typical V-twin vibrations. Which I'm not accustomed to. And I'm getting quite some wind on my, on my helmet and my face. I can feel quite some wind noise right now doing 90. Because it's a fuel injected bike, uh, 2010 model, it has the uh, modern electronics. And uh, so that means that he now sports a um, little thingity bob on the display where you do not only have a clock but also your uh, trip and gauge trip and ODO meters but also your fuel um, not the fuel gauge that's one right here you got fuel speed rpm and temperature but uh, apart from the fuel gauge uh, we have a uh, fuel consumption rate efficiency in uh, liters per hundred kilometers which is a uh, convenient It can also be set to miles per gallon, I think, I'm not sure, but it's set to what we Belgians are used to, liters per hundred kilometers. And the average was around 4.2 liters per hundred kilometers, so that's not a lot for a uh, heavy bike like this. And it's quite nice to lean into the corners, it, it feels stable, it doesn't feel top heavy like the BMW did. However. Uh, I'm not gonna talk about that BMW video. If you want to check it out, uh, the link's in the description. And <laughs> it still sounds weird to my, to me. And it's nimble as well. When you're riding really slow, it's it's really responsive to steering inputs. As you could see, probably by that wobble I just did back there, while I opened the visor. Other cool stuff that's new compared to his previous bike is the combined ABS system which is a system that is like normal ABS a system that uh, prevents from the wheels locking up under braking heavy braking I should say which doesn't mean you can't fall anymore but you can brake a whole lot harder without having to uh, be scared about locking up the front wheel or the rear wheel now what the combined part of that system is, is that when you touch one of the brakes, instead of both of them, the system will activate both brakes. So if I just slightly tap the rear brake, it will engage the front brake minimalistically, but it will engage. It will actually send some pressure to the front brake. Which I'm not sure if it's an advantage or a disadvantage. I mean, I'm pressing the rear brake pedal because I want to brake on the rear, not in the front. So, I think experienced riders can see my uh, my confusion about that part. Um, however, if you're a leisure rider that is um, not so focused on, on skill and control of the bike, or you're someone who doesn't ride very often and doesn't or doesn't know his bike that well, Um, it's a good thing, it's a safety thing, of course, but in my opinion, everything that's safety can and will, and to some degree, take away from the fun, eventually. 
but it's yeah I'd say it's neglectable in a way if you're you're not driving a touring bike to go you know sliding through corners and stuff like that so and I can actually feel it a little bit if I uh, press the rear brake while I'm holding the front brake I can feel some pressure um, I can feel the front I can feel the difference in the front brake when I start touching the rear brake but it's a very very fluent smooth running bike right so now we're below 3000 rpm and I already feel that it doesn't have the the torque I wanted to have all the way up to five and a half it's nice Oh, the steering input is so smooth. You just just a little press on the bars, and it'll go straight at it. I mean, look at this. Just turning a bike like that. Um, so smooth, very smooth, very fluent, very nice to ride. I'm comfortable. I can. I have the feeling I can sit like this for a while. My knees are a little uh, bent out of shape, but you know, you can stretch, you can lift or raise. Or lower your foot, your um, knees a little bit. You know, it's, it's not an unovercomable um, discomfort. So, apart from that, yeah, it's a nice bike. Um, ooh, back into first gear, probably. Yep, that was first gear. It's also very smooth shifting down to first gear. It's well synchronized. back into first so smooth it just it just almost does it automatically it's like it's electrical oh please hi please yeah the gearbox almost seems electrical like you're pushing a button and it shifts for you it's so smooth you can hardly feel the, the gear change itself in the foot peg something which is very very prominent on my own bike if I can put it somewhere yeah that ought to be nice very smooth sailing here let's turn around to give you a sweet look of the bike oh still in neutral that's why she wouldn't okay she does not shut off like the BMW does and she leans over quite far so Honda Deauville 2010 model this is basically what she looks like combined ABS on the logos right here v-twin engine very smooth soft silent fluent got Bridgestone battle X tires on it right now uh, the GV top case the integrated side cases um, it has a center stand, which is nice for if you're doing your own maintenance. And I'm gonna see if I can get her up on that thing. Where is that? Just grab right here, and she's on. That's a, something I wasn't able to do until a while ago. I uh, even with a scooter, I couldn't get it onto the center stand. Right here, we have a little dial for the. Um, what's that? spring preload adjustment which will basically um, rise or lower the bike a little bit on the rear so when you're heavy, heavy packed and with a passenger oh I'm getting hungry shifter pedal is nicely tucked away so yeah that's uh, seems like it's also ready to accept speakers or some sort you got a uh, little compartment right there got a locked compartment right here with the key and uh, yeah I was actually gonna do this see how well I can adjust this see how she rides in the top position because I had it all the way down to start with because it's a uh, more uh, 
of a sporty looking <laughs> I think this is just you know it looks sorry dad but this this setup with the high shield and all that just looks old it looks like 60 70 year old riding a motorcycle but for science so average four liters which meant I I brought it down dad I consistently kept the bike over 3000 rpm and the fuel consumption dropped now I gotta get back on the road because the sun is killing me let's see if we can get over there I almost got no wind right now, if I just relax and drop a little bit and you can see 60-70 kilometers an hour windscreen up absolutely no wind, I can keep the visor open even so that's cool, that's damn handy if you're on highway situations however it does limit your um, wind chill so on a hot day I would rather have some wind on my body and, and drop the visor down this will be the end of the video guys, I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions for the owner of the bike, please feel free to uh, post them in the comments and I shall get back to you as soon as possible.